Good morning and happy holidays, everyone. It is Positive Tuesday today, December 26th, 2023. Uh, for Baron County Sheriff Chris Fitzgerald, I'm Dryden Wire founder Ben Dryden, and you are watching Positive Tuesday with Ben and Fitzy, presented by Professional Exteriors and Interiors. With 20 years of experience, this locally owned and operated business provides quality work both on the inside and on the outside of your home or business. Like Fitzy and I, they believe it's the little things that make a big difference. Give Brian a call today. The number's right there on the screen, 715-520-2271. Fitzy, it's been a couple weeks. Lots yeah. going on, holiday stuff, everything. Good morning. How are you? I'm, I'm awesome. It's the last time we get to say 2023, though, on the show, isn't it? Oh, right. Oh, I should Next probably update it. 2024. My... Right. It's yeah. coming we'll quick. We'll see you next year. Right, is that what everybody said at school when you're let out? See you next year. <laughs> we'll save that for the end. <laughs> okay, we will. Uh, wow. So I did something different to our. When yeah, I put you did. Our, Dirk's huge. Yeah, and maybe that's not. Uh, well, hey, Dirk, anyway. Dirk, give us the weather a little bit early so we can talk about it because there's probably not much to talk about. So we should talk about the weather. Yeah, so uh, we put in the thing. Uh, today please share with us so if you're watching this please put in something positive it's our last show of the year uh we want to give thanks to a lot of people we just want to kind of do a little bit of a recap um some fun stuff uh, but first as always we have to talk about sports because why not and we always do this we always ask each other one question we know so much about it <laughs> right. uh, but it's something that you and i've always enjoyed sports and i think some other people do maybe not some people kind of skip past some of these parts which whatever uh, all right, so we'll get to the weather here. Ah, oh, shoot. You know what? Let's just do it right now. See, it's auto-adjusts. That's what it's doing. That's so right. after a warm Christmas, temps will be cooler this week. So we'll have no more. I'm just looking for snow. Uh, uh, which remix? <laughs> to, uh, to, uh, except for that Winter next weekend. Remix. It's little, not much snow. No travel problems. There you okay. go. Okay. Thank you, Kirk. Our weather guy, Dirk, is on it. Yeah. We may recap that at the very end as well. But wow, Good. nice... All right, that's awesome. All right, sports questions. So I was gone this l last few days. I only got to watch one uh, uh, game, and when I got back last night, I watched the 49ers game. But that was the only thing I even watched all weekend. But my <laughs> question for you is... Um, How's your boy? I'll go what? first. How's your boy? Since that's the only game you watch. How's your boy, Brock? Brock Purdy. I mean, you know, you're going to have a bad game every once in a while. Right, I agree. Uh, I don't think it was as bad. So the 49ers lost last night, 33-19 to, to the Ravens. He had four interceptions. Brock Purdy, the quarterback for the 49ers. Tam Darnold came in. He threw an interception. So, you know, they had five turnovers, and they only lost by 14. So I'm not, like, overly concerned or anything. You know, you're going to have a bad game. I'm not that it's worried kinda about like, it. Kind of like the Minnesota Vikings. Their quarterback threw one of her four or five interceptions. They only lost by six. So, and they yeah. had a chance to win it. I mean, oh, it's terrible. That's just it. So, no, I'm not yeah. uh, uh, my boy, Brock Purdy, because I'm all in on him. Ho future Hall of Famer, Brock Purdy. I watched one game last year and said, that's it. He's a Hall of Famer immediately. Um, all right. So, my question for you is we have talked, this is kind of part of our little bit of a recap for our shows, is we have talked on the show about generational talent. And that was a Connor Bedard in hockey. He plays for the uh, Blackhawks. Now he's an 18 year old and he's still like leading his team and everything. But the Blackhawks are the, pretty much the worst team in hockey or the second worst in terms of wins, but still they're terrible. And these are generational talents. Then you look at Victor, uh, uh, Victor Wembayama, who also we've talked about on the show, you know, this also generational talent. And he's on the Spurs and they are the second worst team in the NBA. So which one are you more surprised by uh, in terms of these generational talents, their first year, they're both playing very well, but the teams are terrible. Which one are you yeah. more surprised by? Well, I think that the Spurs, just because you do, you have some talent on the team, you shouldn't lose whatever 29 games in a row. Um, so, I mean, yeah. Connor Bernard has got, has got some talent. I mean, he is his Michigan play and, and my kid was part of the Michigan play at the state championship when three of our boys did that. Um, you know, the similar play at the state championship. So uh, in hockey, that's a real tough play to pull off. I mean, he's got some talent, but you, the Spurs should be winning. You shouldn't lose 29 games in a row. Yeah. I don't care how bad or how good you are. You should beat a team someday. Um, but that's terrible. That Detroit is 
De- oh, Detroit is uh, yeah. That's the only reason yeah. that the Spurs aren't last because Detroit's like <laughs> on a historic losing streak. Yeah. They don't uh, have yeah. any good players, obviously. No, no. Yeah. I would agree with you though that uh, in hockey, I mean, how many? There's like uh, there's five skaters on at once, and then a goalie. But the lines are always changing. So there's like 18 people that end up playing in hockey. I mean, in a game or somewhere around there. In in basketball, 75, 80% of all the minutes are based on five people. So you have more of an ability to impact the game in the NBA than you do in hockey for a generational talent. So I'm a little more surprised by the Spurs being that bad. Because he's doing really well, but dang. Can you imagine if they didn't have him? I don't think they would have won a game all year. Yeah, and that was a great sports weekend. I mean, we had Christmas Eve in our house, and all we did was watch Packers and the Vikings, and it was great. And it was it was a great sports weekend. And yesterday, all the NBA games with NFL mixed in, and YouTube TV had a split screen so you could watch basketball and football. It was great. <laughs> well, I wish I was there for all of that. So, um, n- all right. So we're going to skip our press releases and articles because we want this show to kind of be interactive as well. So people, please put in your comments, share something positive, and we'll start getting to all of that uh, in 15 seconds after a word from Spooner Health. In our satisfaction surveys and in conversations with patients, they appreciate the fact that staff got to know them. Staff really took their preferences into account, and they just feel grateful that they are being cared for as a person. To learn more about our services, visit SpoonerHealth.com. Uh, so Renee had asked, uh, she said, good morning, Ben and Fitzy. What kind of sass can we get into? Hey, as much sass as you want, Renee. That's right. It's the last show. <laughs> yeah, go we right don't ahead. have to work real hard at that. Yeah. <laughs> Besides, it's day after trouble. Christmas, FCC probably isn't even listening. So, That's right. You know. It's a federal holiday. No, it's not a federal holiday. Oh. But there's courts in session today, but the county's closed. So, What's that? How, how the, can both those be true? And uh, uh, Merry Christmas, the, Mark. What? Merry Christmas, Mark. Um, the court system runs different from the county system. So courts are open today and there's court, uh, but the county's closed because Christmas Eve and Christmas Day fell on a Sunday, so you get an extra day off. Fantastic. So, yeah. yeah, wasn't aware of that. Not us. We work 24-7, you and I. Yeah, you're back at work. <laughs> I see you at a, a polo today, so no meetings yeah. today. So wait, wait, hold on. So how was your Christmas? Good. My Christmas was perfect. Um, kids were both home. My parents came over. My brother came over. We just had we had actually had Bona Casa and watched football all day. It was great. <laughs> that sounds awesome. Yeah, yeah it was. It was great. We didn't travel anywhere yesterday. My mom and dad, I know, delivered meals. Um, one of the churches gave away meals. And- oh, and Bunny, you're my – oh, Ben, I hope – oh, thank you, Bunny. That was very nice of you to say happy birthday. Um, and oh, thank you, Chris. But whatever. She's just saying that because, you know, she's your mom. Yeah, that's right. Uh, yeah. For a wonderful Christmas. Have a wonderful <laughs> New Year. No kidding. Yeah. Oh, love that. So, yeah, just hanging out. What did you was, do? You <sighs> went somewhere, though. I went to Chicago, yeah. It was a last, uh, kind of a last-minute thing. My brother and his wife, Christina, went down late Saturday night. Uh, uh, my wife, Jerusha, and I, and three of our kids, uh, Anna, Kenneth, and Riley, we left at 4.30 Saturday morning. Uh, we didn't get back to last night, so it was like a two-and-a-half-day trip. Three days total, but really 14 hours in a car, you know, over three days was a lot. Uh, and it was really kind of gloomy down there, but also freaking awesome. Uh, oh, my daughter took a, a, a photo. This was a view from our hotel balcony, and you could see the clouds. I mean, you can only see like three blocks away, but it was like Gotham City kind of feel. It was <laughs> so cool being down there i mean there's no snow it wasn't raining it was just heavy heavy fog um but we ended up walking around uncle al he's been on a show law enforcement for 40 years down in chicago he uh was our tour guide and uh, so we walked around like 30 blocks on saturday saturday afternoon and evening and every spot he's like okay in this place it was a crime this and this so all his memories of every single place it was like a it was like a, a law enforcement tour of downtown chicago yeah i remember over here yeah i got a an eighth gram of coke and a for a prostitute thing and then i arrested her here and then, so it was a different perspective on chicago with uncle al leading the way um but that was fun had a lot of food al's at a, al's italian beef anybody knows al's Ital- i mean jeepers if you were chicago you gotta go uh it's historic um yeah, Matt came down Saturday night. We walked all over on Sunday the whole day. We were walking everywhere, which I'm not really used to <laughs> at all. 
uh, went to Moody Bible uh, uh, Moody Bible Institute, the Moody Bible Church at the Moody Bible Institute for their Christmas Eve service on Sunday night. Uh, it was great. Here's one thing: if you're heading to Chicago, we found this out after the fact. So we went out for breakfast on Sunday morning at this like Medi's Cafe or something downtown, and you know you're gonna pay more. We understand that. But it was the seven of us, and I'm like, yeah, I'll take the bill. And it was like 160 bucks, and I'm like, all right, I figured it's going to be. And then I left, you know, thirty, forty dollar tip. But kind of find out, they include like 18 or 20 percent tip in everything, but they don't tell you. So I left like eighty dollars in tips. <laughs> so <laughs> if you crazy. go to Chicago, the tips are already included, so you don't need a tip. Good question to ask when you travel. Yeah, couldn't find out. But, uh, no, that was wonderful. And, of course, on the way back, this is what I wanted for my birthday anyway, which was Christmas Day yesterday, was just time with family. So six and a half hours in a car, that was <laughs> wonderful. Like, no kidding, that was wonderful. The whole trip was just great. Uh, I love Chicago. We should go down to Chicago sometime. Uh, we'll take the show down there. That's right. We'll do it live from downtown Chicago. Wouldn't that be Let's fun? Let's do it at midnight in a dark alley and see how much crime we can come up. <laughs> we'll, we'll get Uncle Al. Uh, yeah, that's right. We might need him if we're doing <laughs> it then. Right. <laughs> exactly. All right. So, um, oh, Chris, uh, good morning, love your show. Merry Christmas. Happy New Year. Merry Christmas, Chris, and Happy New Year. That's very nice. And Steve, usually notes on your bill with a gratuity. Yeah, we found that. That's how we ended up discovering it, by the way, where the first two places didn't have that. And then the next place did. It doesn't matter. Point is, yeah, it was <laughs> a lot of people got a lot of tips from us for a while until we figured out <laughs> they're already getting tips. Sucker. So, <laughs> uh, so uh, um, thank you, everyone. Please put in some positive comments. Share something with us. We'll talk about it. So we'll just kind of start. We're, again, we're skipping our press releases and articles. Um, Fitzy, let me just ask, what is this show meant to you throughout this year? You know, I was, when we were just signing on, I looked at our logo. You know, we made that logo, or you made that right. logo, uh, and I think, and yeah. I just think it's cool. We've been doing this for multiple years now, um, and I just think it's a it's a way to get information out to people. Uh, obviously, some people don't like the information we share, and some people don't. But it's just it's fun. It's a way to get information out there. It's a way to explain our press releases that can't go on a 30 second radio th clip or a half a page article in the newspaper. It's a way to explain what law enforcement does. It's a way to um, explain how the sheriff's department operates and why we do what we do. Um, I, yeah, it's, it's meant a lot to me uh, professionally and personally, you know, the friendships we create with people, the contacts you create with people um, just and, and my job is all about creating contacts and I can have a contact in case something bad happens. You know, I can go to Mike Schaefer and go, boom, Spooner Health can help us do that or whoever. Um, and so I think it's the contacts. It's a way to raise awareness on certain things. Um, you know, we've helped a lot of nonprofits out. We've helped a lot of different <laughs> some, groups. In some ways, out. in indirect ways. We've <laughs> <laughs> indirect ways, too. <laughs> Yeah, indirect ways that we've made money for people. Uh, whether they um, wanted us to or not. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Uh, can so, I ask you something? Uh, and, yeah. and this will be more of a, like, a, all right, let's turn the lights down and get a cup of coffee and have a talk. But you had okay. said that this show is meant to a lot to you professionally, but also personally. Can you expand on that? What do you mean personally? Well, sure. Just the friendships you create with people. I mean, we're we this is a business you're running and i'm running a business on my end and we do this professionally but we make it fun and and you got to have a little fun in your life you got to have balance it creates balance um it's a way for me to talk about some of the bad stuff that happens yeah. um it's you know there's bad stuff that happens in law enforcement and i it's a way to express that so it's a way to get it out there because i just who else just i don't care if you don't listen at least i'm talking about it, it makes me feel better and and it's it's just a good thing. Yeah. What is that noise? Uh, it's just a radio making noise. Ah. I mean, there's no crime or nothing. So, so like it just randomly <laughs> does that? Yeah. It was it just makes noise. Medical alarm or ambulance talking. I couldn't. Yeah. I wasn't listening. <laughs> I was, whatever. I did a show, folks. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. I, and, and, you know, you brought up Mike Schaefer. So I, I do want to say thank you to 
uh, Brian Daniels, a professional exteriors and interiors for you know supporting our show, and also uh, Mike, he's filled in for you sometimes. He's been on our show. We, uh, we I hate saying it out loud, but it is a positive Tuesday show. It's the last one, so I will say I do actually uh, like Mike. Mike, uh, he's legit, uh, both personally and professionally. Uh, so thank you, because they also do our commercials, right? And we've been telling people that, you know, you can do a, like a 15-second commercial, and they were the first ones to do one. Uh, so they kind of took a chance on that as well. So thank you to Michelle Martin and Spooner Health and Mike Schaefer. Um, you know, going back to what you're saying about the personal connections or uh, that we make, I've gotten to know Renee Hewitt and Dirk Miller. I've gotten to know a, a whole bunch of people, like personally, from the show, had we not done the show, I would not actually talk to. I had like a, uh, Renee, I'm sure she still watched it a couple weeks ago. We had like an hour phone conversation. I just want to talk to her about some things. Uh, not anything like about, uh, what do you think about the show? We were just talking. And I never would have known her had it not been for this show. So all the personal contacts, nothing to do with business, that I've gotten to uh, experience and get to know them. Uh, Brian says, thank you for sharing info in an entertaining way. Prayers for go. protection and safety. Amen, brother. Yeah. That was a- it, it, you know, it wasn't a great year for law enforcement. When we look at, you know, in January, we'll spend a lot of time talking about our statistics. We're just I love to- that part. I love that show, by the way. It's my favorite yeah. show of the year is we go over all of your numbers. My favorite show. Yeah. But, you know, but the headline is going to read 2023 was not a great year for law enforcement. Mm. Uh, right now we're planning a trip to Washington, D.C. to, you know, honor our fallen officers. That's not a fun thing to do. It's not going to be a vacation when we go out there. Um, so we're working on that for both Chatech, Cameron and St. Craig County. Um, so, you know, that's the sucky part, but it's again, some healing, some good things come out of it. You know, uh, you know me and, and I know you, and we're always looking at the half glasses, half full. I mean, we've made people a lot stronger, um, partners with law enforcement after what happened. You shouldn't have a bad thing to make partnerships stronger, but it, that's what happens out of it. Everybody wants something good to happen out of things, so we do that. I mean, you look at what Dirk does for us and just getting the weather out, somebody that we can trust on the weather. It's not He doesn't predict the weather. He just says, this is what it looks like. This is what no. the model shows. Yeah, it, he yeah. doesn't say. I actually trust him rain. more than anybody else. No joke. Right. I, I'm not saying that just because I like Dirk, but no kidding. Right. He's never been wrong on anything that he has ever said. Right. Well, because he doesn't say, you know, what? look at our politicians we get to go with. Oh, Representative we, you know, Gabe Manifitz, good morning. We get to see our politicians in a different light. And so, um, yeah, we've had yeah, some the- people on. Yeah, it's yeah, it's kind of interesting when you look back. You know, I don't think we really do that very often. And now I think about it, I really didn't even before the show this morning look back to see all the people that we've had on for shows or that we have talked about. Uh, yeah, because you kind of look at it, you, know, you and I just week at a week or week mm-hmm. at a time, I should say. But when you actually stop and go, holy cow, we did like 50 shows this year. Yeah. And that was a lot of information that we shared. Um, yeah. yeah, oh, Dave, oh, I lost my little dinger yeah. button on here. Uh, yeah. Chief Wilson, uh, thank you for talking about some of the harder topics, the impact, that impact the law enforcement community. And that kind of, I think, ties back into a little bit for uh, what Brian had said. Thank you for sharing info in an entertaining way. Because we've had, I mean, yeah, it's hard to really do positive. This is what we had talked about before we kind of decided to do the show the way that we do it. There are some heavy topics. Mm -hmm. And some things you can't laugh and joke about, but we do find levity. And I usually end up do kind of laughing a little bit about something because that's how I process stuff. And I think a lot of people process stuff that way. It's heavy. But, you know, we can, we're not trying to make it seem as though it's, it's not that big a deal. These are some big deals that are happening around here. Mm Mm-hmm. But there's a way we can present it, I think. And we're, that's oh, what I, our goal was and that we put our effort into. Yeah, we don't like to talk about OWIs or people that cause accidents or, you know, but and we don't do it to embarrass them. Correct. That's just public record. I mean, I don't, I don't come on this thing and just to make fun of people. That's part of the process. I do, of, uh, I do sometimes. Well, yeah, I don't. But <laughs> I but that's the public record part. If you don't want to be in trouble, then don't commit the crime. I mean, I don't know what to tell you. You, you know, and we we're, we're, we've limited it this year more than anything about releasing. We don't release any victims' names anymore. We don't release. We're very we've gotten better at doing that. Um, but the people on the show have made have me have made me better. Have made our department better. I mean, 
I don't know all the answers. We've never stood on the show and said, we're perfect. Whatever we say is goes because we learn a lot from some of the comments or some of the emails we get after the show. Um, some are negative, some are positive, you know? Um, and I've learned to sh- shred some of that negativity and say, you know what? I guess you're just unhappy. That's just your life. Um, so. See, that's true. Now I think about it. I was, I take everything personally, as you know, and, and I get mm-hmm. emotional about things easily. Kind of a wuss that way. But I think I have actually gotten a little tougher skin, or at least now I kind of recognize you're just, okay, whatever. But there's been a lot of stuff. And looking over 50 shows just this year of all the comments and questions that people have asked, I mean, this is like an opportunity to have direct access to the sheriff in Barron County. Put in a question. I don't think we've ever, if we did, we didn't mean to. We've never not asked, and by we, you, have never not answered a question. Any questions you have, you've always been open and transparent. If you have a question, let me know and I'll answer it. Right. And I forget about yeah. that. I mean, how many questions have we probably had uh, this year? I mean, hundreds oh. yeah. that they never would have had answers to uh, had we not done the show. So I didn't think about that. I hadn't thought about that before. And I, I'm surprised at all the people that are watching this live online. I know people talk about it all the time. Um, about... And I know people watch it afterwards, too. Most people but, actually watch it afterwards. But yeah. yeah, but there's a lot of people that are online right now sure. watching us. And it's 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 awesome. I, I just think that's a great way to another form of, of people to reach out and access information and make themselves smarter and stronger and more informed. So I want to thank all the viewers. I mean, that watch our show. I don't do it yeah. for the views. You do it for the views. Well, actually, I don't. That's how, but... Well, I know you don't, but that's how you pays the bills. I mean, that's how oh, it sure, does sure, have sure. to pay for itself. Because if you right. don't make money, we're not going to do this show anymore. Probably not. <laughs> right. I, mean, I love the show. I really do. Job. But, you know, it takes about four <laughs> hours for each one of these shows. And I don't know about you, but I don't like working for free. I mean, come on. <laughs> <laughs> don't become an elected official then. No, I'm just kidding. I get paid good. So. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. So, thank. yeah. Oh, my goodness. Yep. Stay true to yourself. But I totally you know agree. What? I was thinking about all the people that will have to work on Christmas day. And so I went down, I came over to the office and thanked everybody for working. Not that they had a choice, oh. but you know, <laughs> I mean, they didn't doing you a favor or anything, right? <laughs> right? I mean, they weren't doing me a favor. They were, you know, some people didn't take vacation. Some people tried to and couldn't because of seniority, other things happened in the world. So I just came over and thanked them. Um, but I drove down Main Street, you know, and quick trips were open. So I want to thank all the employees that have to work Christmas day, our hospitals, our nursing homes, and um dollar dollar general is open and the motels you know you stayed in a motel we always forget i think about those type of people that had to work on christmas eve and christmas day because people like us expect to stay in a hotel if we want to family comes up and has to stay in a hotel because they you know visit somebody so i think we forget about our hospitality workers you know there wasn't many restaurants open i'm Mm -hmm. sure there was some that i missed but um, but you know, hospitality workers, I think we, sometimes we, we know everybody thanks the cops and the firemen and the nurses. Yeah. Um, but I think we forget about our hospitality workers a lot. Well, I, that came to, uh, I thought about that yesterday when we were coming back Christmas day, coming back from Chicago right. and we're like, you know, we should stop here, you know, for breakfast. Oh, that's closed. And now we're mm-hmm. just leaving Chicago, which by the way, leaving Chicago on Christmas day morning or late right. morning, like no traffic. And really? no cops. We didn't see any cops until no we, cops. we saw one. No kidding. One state We're patrol. We're uh, Well, whatever. I don't think yesterday. Nobody was. One, like north of Madison, we saw one state patrol officer. But nobody was pulled over for the whole trip. 400-mile trip. We didn't see anybody. And on the way down, we saw tons. Uh, but we're doing – I was on cruise control at 85. At, on cruise control. Leaving Chicago. And, and there were still people passing me. And like – it just feels weird, but nobody was out there. But anyway, so we always wanted to stop to find something to eat. Nope, close, 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 close. You know the only place that we saw on the interstate? I mean, the Burger Kings, the Hardee's, the, any fast food on the side. Everything was closed except Quick Trip. So thank yeah. you, Quick Trip. Because no kidding, that's where we ate breakfast, lunch, and a snack for the whole yeah. trip back. That's to right, stop anyway. Quick Trips. Right. <laughs> But yeah, that uh, there were a lot of a lot of places closed yesterday. But the ones that were open and the people then had to staff it and the people that worked there, yeah, that's legit. Yeah, I need the quick trip to help. I need a bigger one on the north end of Race Lake. That's the one I always use. It need to. I want the bigger one, the 
little, ours is a little small. It's a little cramped. So if Quick Trip's listening, I'd like to remodel the north end of Rice Lake's Quick Trip. You know, <laughs> all these new Quick Trips are so cool. But I know, uh, I know. I want we one have... of these. The Barren one, the Turtle Lake one, Cumberland's. I need a bigger one on the north end of Rice Lake. Just putting it out there. They're expanding <sighs> in 2024, so I'm just letting them know. Well, they're. I mean, seriously, it's There's so nice. It's not. There. I know it's uh, uh, the food actually because it's not like I'm not banging. Well, I totally am. I'm banging on gas station uh, sandwiches. Yeah. Quick trips aren't like it was actually yeah. pretty good. And they I'm thinking, oh, okay, well, finally, like, actually, hold on. If we're going to talk all about this, we're going to start getting some money getting paid here from Quick Trip <laughs> if we're doing right. all this. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Uh, Renee says, bad. sometimes I wish your shows could run an hour. Uh, some has, and I feel, and I love the flexibility, the trust and love you give to every aspect of your show. Godspeed to all the, uh, to all entering into the new year. Be safe, be kind, most of all, help and love each other. Amen, Renee. Love that. Absolutely right. love it. And, uh, oh, uh, thank you, yeah, Beth. Well, Church. Dad delivered to all the fire, EMS, and ambulance crews yesterday, delivered meals around after the church gave them out. So everybody ate good around here. Yeah, I still want to know when uh, when your dad's selling that car because I got dibs on <laughs> it. Not for a while. All right, well I got dibs. So explain that a little bit more then. Uh, uh, the feeding law enforcement so he just went around. Well, Bethany gave a free meal out for people because there's no restaurants open in case you couldn't if you didn't want to eat alone or if you're he- you were homebound. Then people delivered meals to you. So someone because there's no meals on wheels. Meals on wheels is a unique opportunity. We should probably have ADRC on here to talk about meals on wheels for 20, 2024 because they're always looking for volunteers. So okay. I'm going to get ADRC on here and Boys and Girls Club too because we're raising money for the Boys and Girls Club and it's the end of year campaign and I'm supposed to raise some money for them. So I want everybody to donate 10 bucks to the Boys and Girls Club or something. Oh, oh, oh. Forget my ignorance. I mean, I've heard of that, but I actually don't know what it is. What, Boys and Girls Club? Yeah. It is our, you know, Make the everyday lives of okay, but I mean, what what do they do? Is what I mean. Well, they're an after school program. Oh, okay. and a summer program, just you know, kind of like a YMCA. Yeah. Um, maybe that's more Chicagoan, but boys and girls clubs. Uh, well, actually, the home base of boys and girls clubs is in Schaumburg, Illinois. Oh, sure, sure. So, yeah, so um, boys and girls club is a great organization, and they're an end of the year campaign they're doing right now. And um, I'm on their board of directors, and have oh, of been course you are. Six. <laughs> 16 years and we're building a new club and we're raising money to for our operations and so um it's just a good thing and i know people like to give and i know people like to volunteer and i know um so we want an adrc is another program um, that people should talk about meals on wheels you should spend an hour delivering meals or even a half hour delivering meals every day they give meals out to people that are homebound and you just take a meal in drop it off at their door and i do it once a year but if everybody did it once a year, they wouldn't have to go look for volunteers. Yeah. So, uh, when we were down in Chicago, so my, my my favorite part of Chicago, in terms of this trip, was that Kenneth and Raleigh, because Anna's been there before, but got to see uh, more diversity, more diverse. Mm-hmm. Um, it got to experience something different because they're you know from rural, you know, northwest of Wisconsin. So you got to see the best in people, some of the bads in other people, but there was a lot of homeless and there was a whole bunch of uh, um, uh, Venezuelans that were bussed in for the last week for uh, uh, border crossing stuff like Texas or whatever. They're like busing them now to Chicago. So we saw a whole bunch of those, uh, you know, mm-hmm. with the signs of the family. They're all sitting out and there's a whole bunch of homeless people, not a whole bunch, but a, Chicago. So more, a lot of homeless people. More than Spooner? Uh, probably. Uh, yeah, a lot more. Uh, so, you know, your heart goes out to them. Right. Uh, but at the same time, you don't know if they're just looking for, you know, just enough money to go, then get another hit and then go back out. And that's kind of their way of just supporting their drug. Hap- you just don't really know. I mean, we'd have gone broke because if, if you just gave money to the homeless people when you're walking 30 blocks, because you'd have seen 100 of them asking. And it's like, well, if you give them five bucks, that's five hundred dollars you just spent. And you don't know where it's going. So that was a, a tough conversation to have with the kids. Like, what do you do? In those situ- situations, but speaking of homeless, what is that uh, 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 situation in Barron County right now? End of the year, looking back, like is that an issue in Barron County? There's always going to be homelessness, but is it higher? Is it lower? As far as you know, or is it the same? And then what are we doing about it? 
Well, I sit on the Benjamin House Board, which is our homeless shelter in, in Barron County. <clears throat> I also help with the Salvation Army, who's building a new homeless shelter, I want to call it, just uh, uh, west of or east of Barron. Um, I'm sorry, west of Barron. Um, so we're we're working on that <clears throat> problem. Um, is it a problem it, is what I'm asking first. Is it a big problem? I mean, it's all if one person's homeless, it's a problem. I mean, is it like, uh, are we seeing it uh, a trend going upwards of a lot more or? I don't think it's a trend yet. Um, It depends on if the rent keeps going up for some of these places. And some of it is because I have a habit and I burned some bridges. Some of it is truly I can't afford it because I got divorced or I got lost my job. Or there's some things that that we're trying to help people and we're trying to help people even with drug habits, too. But so that is an issue again. having Lori Zarbuck, who runs our Boys and Girls Club, Jen Mason, who runs our Benjamin House. Those are all people we should probably have on here to talk about their programs and how people can help and just to raise awareness and to have more information out there for people. Um, It's just another tool for them to have in their toolbox to say, hey, look at this. So so I guess I can start lining up guests for 2024. I guess that'll be a goal. That'd be wonderful. That'd be great. Uh, So we have about 15 minutes left. But if anyone, anyone that is still watching that would like to put in, put in something that was uh, your, your favorite part about Christmas so far or the holidays so far, or maybe even what you're kind of thankful for over this, uh, this time of the year. Uh, Mindy Hansen says, I don't often get the chance to watch you live, but when I do, I appreciate you both. Oh, thank you, Mindy. Thank you for sure. being here and sharing. Happiest of New Year to you both. Well, thank you, Mindy. That was very, very nice. Uh, there's a question. Hey, there's one for Kaylee. How do you sign up to volunteer to deliver meals on wheels? And that would be through the ADRC in Barron County. Um, and like I said, and <clears throat> you can do it. There's, there's several locations like hub bases like Rice Lake or Barron. Um, and so you, if you live in Rice Lake, you can out of the senior center, you stop, they give you a bag of meals all bagged up, you deliver them and that's it. You're done for the day. It, it can take you as much as a half hour. It can take you as much as an hour depending on the route you want. Um, they'll, I, and I think they give almost 500 meals a day. I mean, it's, 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 that seems it's a little, lot. that's a lot higher than I thought it was going to be. I had no barometer yeah. for it, yeah. but yeah. I don't know. I was figuring like 7,500, but it's, that's it's a, lot. a lot. They make a lot of food. Um, you know, and, and when you think about all of Barron County and you, you, if I deliver 20 meals, you know, it doesn't take too long to get to, and it's only five drivers gets you to a hundred. You know, so you only need 20 drivers to get to 500, so. Yeah. Uh, <clears throat> well, Heather says she's thankful for no snow. So am I. I'm just, I know people didn't like it over Christmas, and I get it, but it makes the road safer. It makes travel easier for people. It makes our airlines better. Um, so, yeah, I think it's All great. All right. Well, uh, Brent is apparently thankful that uh, Fitzy <laughs> is not, you never throw in the back of a squad car. Well, if you just want to go to, you can schedule it. He'll do a special <laughs> yeah. one for you. Uh, he'll come out, throw you in the back of the squad car, take her on the block, and bring you back. <laughs> we don't We don't bring people back home. We don't bring people back <laughs> uh, We only go one direction. So. <laughs> Favorite thing, family. Fa- oh, yeah, 100%. I mean, yeah. that's where it's at, right? Family. And that's what you did yesterday. So, what's that? And it said, and that's what you were experiencing yesterday, and so did I. I mean, family, and that's the, uh, you know, those people kind of tend, the, the difficult conversation having with the kids about those homeless people down in uh, Chicago that we saw, especially the migrants uh, that were, or the, that got busted in the city, so we saw them all over the place, is, it isn't just the, uh, the fact that they're homeless, it's, it's, I don't think there's a good time to be homeless or a bad time to be homeless, uh, but, you know, Christmas and going into the winter, it's just right. ugh, like we're all talking about family and how family is everything. They're not. They don't have a family, or if they do, they're not with them, and they're home. Ah, I wish. I mean, that's the one thing I just wish we could solve. I mean, putting all of our attention and money, and even like a government level, sending money and like aid to Ukraine, which I'm sure that's fine. I don't care. But boy, can we just fix that one thing? I mean, it'd be great to <laughs> cure cancer, all, but and we're working on it, I guess. But can we just? That's the one thing. Yeah. Before I even want world peace, I just want people not to be homeless. But can we start gonna, there? Right. But you have to realize being a lot of people struggle with this. And it's not illegal to be homeless. And some people choose to do that. 
So okay. there's there's some differences out there, and some people get frustrated with law enforcement. Again, why I do this show to talk about some of that stuff. They're like, there's somebody sleeping in their car. They choose to do that. Maybe it's mental illness. Maybe it's drugs. And we offer help to all these people, and some people say no. And sometimes you have to hit rock bottom before you say. I know there's a lot yeah. of there's a lot of you know t- tentacles on this, and it can be reached out and for different reasons. But it's not illegal to be homeless, and you can sleep in your car. It's not. Unless you're in danger to yourself or to others is the only time I can act. So if it's 45 out and you want to sleep in your car, you can do that. It's not illegal. There's nothing I can do about it. There's nothing I can hmm. stop you from doing it. So people also need to remember that. Sometimes it's a choice because it simplifies their life. They don't have any stress. Whatever the answer is, I don't know. Um, so I just – now I know it's not a choice for a lot of people. But in some cases, sure. we offer help. Sometimes it's mental illness, whatever, and we can't let them understand it, that it's you, there's other options out there. But um, we do try to work on all that, and we have the ability to help if we need to. Uh, Tracy says, there is a lady in Cumberland who goes to the cities every Christmas to deliver clothes and food to the homeless. Uh, yeah. That This made my Christmas. I love it, Tracy. I absolutely do. Uh, this I had to develop a really thick skin living in Paris. I felt awful to walk by people sleeping under the bridges yeah and that's what that was that conversation we're having because you know in rally because they have never seen this before right 14 and 15 year olds and they're just they're reading every sign like first of all don't read the signs because it's going to pull on your heartstrings and then yeah. you, i mean if you and i don't if you want to give them money go right ahead but you know you don't know what their situation is and which one is legit which one is just do eh, it's a whole other thing i just wish you know nobody unless they wanted to be uh, we're homeless. Yeah. Anyway, okay. So uh, we should talk about New Year's Eve a little bit. New Year's Eve, yeah, up. that's coming up. Su- uh, what day is that? Is Saturday, that? Sunday, Sunday night. So not only is it New Year's Eve, it's also Packer Viking game. Oh, a lot of people are going to be out. There's a huge reason to be out. Packer Viking game, playoff contentions. New Year's Eve in itself is a big night. So I want everybody to make a plan right now. Let's decide right now what our plan is going to be, who's going to drive, or where we're going to go. Um, yeah, but there's a lot of things going on, yeah. so I want people to go out and socialize our establishments, give them a big end-of-the-year push. Uh, I think we've supported our businesses. We've been able to do that on this show a lot, mm-hmm. you know, getting people to go out. We've never said don't go out, don't drink and – all we said is don't drink and drive. Yeah, and go don't out, go have to a, a good time. Right. We talk about OWIs and talk about drunk driving, but we've never said don't go to a bar. Go to a bar, right. it's fine. Go right ahead. Right? Yeah. It's just oh. a business and socializing, fine. Just, if you know, have an exit strategy. If you believe you're there's a chance, you may have more than you think, you, you know, because sometimes when you have a couple, well, what's one more? And then one more. Fine. Just have a backup plan. That's it. Just make a plan now. Yeah, there's live music at the casino. There's DJs. There's all kinds of stuff going on New Year's Eve night. I usually work. I'm pretty sure I'm going to, although I don't like to miss a good football game. So I'm not sure what my plan will be. Maybe I'll go at 10 because then I'll keep, then I'll stay awake until midnight at least. <laughs> right, <laughs> right, right. The later I go out, <laughs> yeah. I'll wait for something to happen. So I worked uh, Christmas Eve night, came out. One of our deputies had to go home. Um hmm sick and i didn't want anybody called in so i worked for a couple hours on christmas eve night i mean that's it was busier than i thought it was going to be um but yeah just have a plan have an exit strategy it's a lot of people call it amateur night because everybody uses it to go out and have a reason because no one works on the first a lot of people don't work on on january 1st so hopefully on the january 2nd when we do our next 2000 our first show of 2024 there's no press releases to do um, you know, I know it was a little bit busier last night. We had an incident last night where a deputy or jailer got spit on uh, during an arrest uh, when we were bringing him into the jail. So there's a, a few things going on, not a lot of crime, nothing uh, press-worthy um, event enough. But, um, you know, there was I think there were six or eight people on the jail roster. So uh, and remember, there's no jail on the first. A lot of times a lot of people are going to get held over on the second. I know two of the people that got arrested on the 24th are being held over today um, in the court. So that means you're not even getting out today. You're not getting out until tomorrow. That's based on reports, on the severity of the crime, on the district attorney's office, you know, having some limited staff, too, because people take vacations. So. Yeah, Jerusha, my wife, works at the DA's office. 
she's off this whole week. Uh, she had, right. uh, you know, she planned this well ahead, but she wanted because the kids are also off at right, school. Right. So, uh, and we knew we we're going to Chicago, so we, she, yeah, she's off this week. So, I would assume a, a lot of, of of our offices are kind of like that. There's always it's right. uh, understaffed, not understaffed, just right. they don't have full staff. Limited staff this week. Dude. Limited. That's a good. That's a very. It's 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 a, 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 a not a riot. It's a, it's a. <laughs> What is it? Civil, civil disturbance. Civil disturbance or civil unrest. Yeah. Civil disturbance. Yeah, there you go. Not a riot. <laughs> Not a riot. <laughs> no, we can't have riots, but we're going to have civil disturbances. <laughs> no. Hey, when will we know about the, if, if your prediction is going to potentially come true about Barron County judge, the third judge, that yeah. if there's only one person running, which I only know of one, but doesn't mean there's right. others. Uh, only one haven't... so far. Okay. So. That's uh, uh, Sam Lawton. For Barron County Judge and the uh, kind of working theory that you had, which I actually agreed with, uh, I think it has potential that it's when do you have to have I papers in, to, right? J- uh, by when? January first. January second, I think. So January third, I I had a somebody in the know. I've had a discussion with someone in the know around here, and they don't believe that that will happen until oh. April. The governor, because someone could run as a write-in. Write-in. Yeah, come on, give me that's a break. stupid. I, I, yeah, I mean, the, on, the odds of winning a judgeship and a write-in is is. is and there's no, and if you, why would you run as a write-in when you have a free shot at running? I mean, so it doesn't make any sense. I hope the governor does the right thing and appoints Sam Lawton on January fourth, which he won't. But maybe in January he does. It doesn't make any sense to restrict. Let him get going so it's not August before we get up and running. Um, so. All right. Uh, Tamara yeah. says, I was just thinking New Year's Eve is amateur night for a lot of people. <laughs> sure. Happy holidays and thank you for the positive Tuesday show. Always enjoy you both. Thank you, Tamara. That was extraordinarily nice of you to say. Thank you. Um, it's been awesome. It's been a great, it's been a bad year for law enforcement. A great year. You know, we always look at it half full. We yeah. always have a great year. Uh, we always look at the positive and just about everything we can come up with. Try to. Um, and I just want to thank everybody for what they've done for the show. Thank you for what you do for law enforcement. I want everybody to have a safe and enjoyable New Year's Eve and a, and a healthy and, you know, prosper 2024. Yeah. And, you know, our, our mantra of the show is little things that make a big difference. I mean, that's our slogan for the show. That's what we talk about. So we may not move the needle. And by we, I mean, not just you and I, but everybody that watches these shows, whether it's live or, or afterwards, if we just do that, and I think hopefully we've all done that, a little thing, talking positive, maybe that puts a smile on your face, and maybe because of that you were extra nice to a person at a quick trip or uh, at a Conomart or whatever, and that little thing made a big difference. So, and there's no way to really qualify it or quantify it. How do you, how do you really know how much difference we've made? I don't know, yeah. but I think it has to be some. I hope as long as we're not going the other direction, you know. We're not. We're not I making feel everybody feel that. like horrible and right. yeah. Um, this week, so also something that's going to be happening before next our next show is college football playoffs. Oh yeah, I think a Monday next Monday. Yeah. So Michigan, number one Michigan against Alabama, and then two, number two Washington against number three Texas, and the winner of those will play a week later for the college football championship. Michigan, Alabama, who are you taking? As if oh, we didn't okay. know. Michigan. <laughs> <laughs> okay, uh, I, I'm gonna. I'll take Alabama in a in a close game, not a low scoring, but like I don't know, 28, 20, 24, 17. Uh, yeah, I'm gonna take Alabama, but if Michigan should win, but I'll take Alabama. And then okay. number two, Washington against number three, Texas. Who you got? And you can pick that one first. I'll take the other. One. Uh, I'll take Washington, and I'm gonna say Washington. It's gonna be a higher scoring game, but almost a blow up for Washington. I'm a huge yeah. believer in that Penix Jr., their quarterback. That dude's legit. Um, I, it's going to be like a 45, uh, 40 to 28 kind of a game. 45, 28. Yeah, I'll take Washington uh, big over Texas. What about you? And Michigan wins the national championship. And then well, Jim well, which Hart one, Washington or Texas? Play. Who do you got? I'll take Texas. I'll okay. Take Texas well, so we both have. The, okay. Yeah. Okay. I don't really care because Michigan's going to win it all. Jim Harbaugh is going to be an NFL coach by the end of the year. And how are they going to win it all when they lose against Alabama? <laughs> I guess you, you know, magic happens. Some, let's believe. Just oh, believe. Rana, thank you to our law enforcement and all they do to keep us safe. Uh, amen. Agree with you 100%. 
and our lives are one giant ripple effect. I think this is referring to <laughs> the awesome. uh, 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 little things make a big difference. 100% agree. I love it. Yeah. I love it. I love it. All right, man. Uh, anything else? Is our last show of the year, our last sign-off for the year? Uh, anything else you wanted to bring up? No. Thank you, everybody, for watching. Thank you for the support you have law enforcement. And uh, have a great and safe 2023. And see you, in two, in, see you next year. See you next year. Hey, oh, Mike now Schaefer. my shaver's on. Oh, jeez. <laughs> we talked good uh, about you, Mike. All for, <laughs> for BearCon <laughs> Chef Chris Fitzgerald, I'm Dryden Wire founder Ben Dryden. And you've been watching Positive Tuesday with Ben and Fitzy, presented by Professional Exteriors and Interiors. With 20 years of experience as locally owned and operated business provides quality work both on the inside and on the outside of your home or business. Give Brian a call today. The number is right there on the screen, 715-520-2271. Fitzy and I are taking a six-day, 23-hour, and 15-minute break. So until next year, <laughs> thank you for watching, and have a blessed day. <laughs>